Let's roll right into our post race for today's 45th annual Camping World RV Sales 500 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race, race number six, and the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. And our race runner up is Dale Earnhardt Jr. He drove the number 88 Mountain Dew Xbox One Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. And uh, Dale, uh, certainly, uh, uh, you were up front just about all day long, led some laps. Uh, and, and just talk about your run out there today here at, uh, at Talladega. Yeah, I was wondering if we might have led the most, but if we didn't, we grew up very close. Um, <clears throat> we had such a good car. I was, uh, you know, we, we, since I've been working with, with Steve, we just haven't really had a good combination here, and maybe I've torn up some really good cars and never just got to see how good they were in the race races in the past, but I knew in practice the car was strong and, uh, just wondered if everybody was showing everything they had. Once you get the whole field out there, it's a little bit different. But our car was a rocket, and we were able to really be aggressive. And I, uh, I just tried to lead every lap of the race, and felt like that you know what I've seen be successful with this package and this car this year. That seems to you know if you're up front all the time, uh, you tend to be there at the end when it counts, and we were so. We got shuffled out there on that last run when we come out of the pits. I thought we pitted a little a little bit early. Gave up a little bit of time. Um, my my crew chief Steve uh, didn't really agree with that, but I just felt like if we could stay out on the racetrack, we had a better shot at coming out in front of them guys. We ended up coming out behind a bunch of people and worked our way up toward the front there on the outside. And I don't, you know, it's all kind of a blur as, as to how we ended up in second. But I had no reason to make a move before the last lap, being in second place. I was in perfect position to be patient and wait as long as I wanted to. Uh, so that's why we didn't go any sooner than that. I, I just can't anticipate a caution coming out every single time we run a Talladega race uh, on the last lap. So I just assumed it would go to checkered and uh, was planning my move on the back straightaway. Uh, we sort of uh, let the one car get out there a little bit going down the front straightaway into turn one and then we mashed the gas in the middle of the corner and got a run with the 14 and we're kind of I was moving around just a little bit to see where the one was think where the one thought I might be going to try because I got to sort of fake him out and and looked in, and I noticed the run stopped and I looked in the mirror and guys were out of control so we didn't get an opportunity to see what would have materialized it wasn't the best run in the world it wasn't what I dreamed it would be all those last few laps but <laughs> uh, it was a good enough run I think to get up to his quarter panel and get beside him and then we would found out who our friends were there at that point but real happy with the way the car ran and it was good to run up front good to lead we really struggled doing that just even being competitive and, and being able to drive up through there and do that like we did today and it felt great thank you dale we'll take questions now let's start with uh, mike Embry and then don coble go ahead mike mike Embry, nascar wire service uh, dale so many different things can happen here um but we have had situations recently where a lot of the races that have, have ended with a situation where you at least have to think about, well, maybe there might be a caution that's going to end like that. Can did you that, remember the last race here that didn't? Exactly. Yeah. Did, how, how much did it go into your thinking? Maybe I might need to be out front just in case we get oh, a final Oh, I wished I was out front. I really did. But I knew that I had everything to lose and really one spot to gain by going early. And if I waited to the last lap, I didn't have. I could possibly defend off a failed run and get a relatively decent finish. Um, I guess uh, you know pulling out early and and it, and that not working and finishing 25th was worse than trying to take the chance. Not a, not a, waiting and being patient. I thought would pay off. And and I knew I knew. You know, every race we have here, we all wreck on the last lap, and I'm for it's fortunate that that wreck wasn't any worse than what we typically see here. But for some reason, it was a lot calmer those last few laps. Everybody was pretty, pretty good about staying in line. I would have been a little more antsy if I'd have been back there in fifth or tenth. But they weren't jumping out, and had they jumped out and moved, you know, with five to go, nine to go, whatever, that would have changed everyone's strategy, and we might have went sooner, been forced to go sooner. And we did, but nobody moved. So I was like, hey, I'm, I'm just going to wait till the end. I don't have to try till the very end. I got one guy to pass. 
and all I got to do is make one run happen and maybe it'll work. Why do you think there wasn't more answer? I don't know. I don't really know. It was earlier. Yeah. I'm I mean, surprised we been in record lap 20. <laughs> <laughs> we raised like hell all day long. Yeah, till the end. <laughs> it was fun. 10 4. Let's hear our, from our third place finisher, and that's Paul Menard. He drives the number 27 Menards Duracell Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing. Paul, congratulations on a good run here today. Maybe just talk about what you saw from your vantage point. Well, um, first off, we uh, started deep in the field, uh, I think 34th or 35th, and knew that we had a really good car. We just didn't do much drafting on, on Friday, so uh, knew we had a good car, knew it was pretty stable, but wasn't totally sure on how it was going to handle in a big pack. Uh, so at the start of the race, we took off and, and tried to learn more than anything. And the car drove really good, was fast, drove to the front, uh, kind of hung out in you know top ten all day long. And just could never get to uh, <clears throat> you know to the first couple rows to lead a lap. But uh, had a good uh, Duracell Menard Chevy all day long. Um, we could make the middle groove work to gain spots and then then get to the outside. And ultimately, the outside lane kind of won out. Um, you know, over the long run, that's kind of where everybody shuffled out to. And uh, just kind of. Right around the last 10, 15 laps, waiting for somebody to make a move. We, uh, I didn't want to be the first guy to do it and get shuffled back to 30th. So um, that's kind of kind of wait for Dale to make something happen. <laughs> okay, let's uh, open it up for questions now for both Dale and Paul. I think uh, Don Coble had one over here. I'm not sure Ed Hinton might have had one too, but let's go Don Coble, Ed Hinton, and then we'll go press box. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Uh, Dale, you said on TV uh, just a minute ago that uh, you were talking about you kind of your plan was you were figuring the 14 was going to going to go with you, and you said whoever else wanted to come along. Uh, it it appears the 17 was what kind of kind of glitched the situation back there. Did you see him back there? Did you know he was going to be a wild part, card? A, yeah, a part of the mix. And oh yeah, yeah. I knew everybody was going to be a part of. To finish somehow, um, I, I was pretty sure Jamie wasn't just going to let me go by. He was going to dra dra side draft, and and then it was going to we were going to play hell trying to get the lead from you know from that point. But uh, I thought Austin would you know I don't know what Austin would have done for for sure, but I assumed knowing him as I do, he was probably going to help me once. You know what I mean? Yeah. And after that, you're on your own. So, uh, but other than that, I mean, Ricky, I didn't know, I didn't know what his plan was or anybody else's. We really hadn't talked to the 14. We we're just kind of waiting to the last lap and going to make a run. And that's 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 what we we're trying to do. Thank you. Let's also hear from our top Sunoco finishing rookie of the year candidate. The good fi fifth place finish here today is uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He drives the number 17 Nationwide Insurance Ford for. Uh, Roush Fenway. And uh, Ricky, congratulations on a solid run. You ran up front. Certainly we're in position there. Had the caution flag not come out, perhaps, to uh, really make something happen there on that last lap. Talk about your run and maybe what you saw the last lap. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, first off, I thought the uh, the racing was great all day. Um, you know, we were two, three, four wide for a long time, and, um, you know, cars seemed to, to be able to make moves and, uh, you know, get some momentum going. So, uh, you know, for our nationwide insurance team, we were – uh, you know, solid all day. Uh, you know, in the top ten a lot of the day, and uh, led a few laps, which is uh, which is good for us. We've uh, trying to get the ball rolling here. Uh, you know, late in the season, and um, you know that last lap there is. I was trying to hang back, time it right, where uh, you know Paul and I could either, you know, kind of get a run on the 14 and go the inside and, and see if we can make something happen, or uh, get him to to pull out and go low, and you know us get back in line on the top and. Uh, try to have a full head of steam for for Dell and, and Jamie there, um, you know, coming down to uh, three and four, just uh, didn't time it quite right, and uh, you know us and the 14 met right there in the middle and uh, and caused a crash. So uh, bummed that uh, that we caused that, but um, you know, all in all, it was a, a good day for us. Let's go back down for questions. Don Coble, do you have one? Let's get him the mic, and then we'll go to the press box. This is for uh, Ricky and Paul. As you road in line there those last 10 laps were you kind of surprised that everybody kept waiting and waiting that that you, that you didn't go any earlier I, I was I thought for sure the um, as good as the middle was all day long I thought for sure the um, you know the 20 uh, the 22 48 some of those guys would get that rolling uh, at the end and uh, it just never never happened 
uh, my spotter kept you know telling me where they were, and uh, I think the closest guy was like six cars behind us, and um, I'm pretty surprised that it didn't make further headway. Ricky. Yeah, yeah, I thought, um, you know, when they said the 22 was lining up on the bottom with about five to go, I, I knew they weren't going to have near enough time to, to get it going and organized uh, to get that momentum. So uh, at that point, I knew it was uh, going to be just, you know, up to us, you know, top five, six cars there uh, running the top. And, um, you know, it seems like throughout the race, uh, there was a lot of guys that, uh, you know, were able to pull out and, and make a move and, and leave me hanging. So, uh, you know, I was going to be that guy to, to, to make the first move. Um, and, and so we tried it. Uh, it just didn't play out. Let's go to the press box. Questions in the press box. Go ahead. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. So, Ricky, what happened with, with Austin out there? I mean, what exactly did you see from your vantage point? Uh, you know, I'd been running half throttle there uh, and, and timing my run off of two. Uh, we, we couldn't seem to get a good run off of four, so I thought two, you know, coming off of two is going to be my, my best place to, to get that done. So, uh, you know, we hung back there a little bit, and um, we had a good run coming. And when I pulled out a little bit there to go to the bottom, uh, he pulled down the block, and, and I tried to get back to the top as quick as I could, um, you know, thinking the, the momentum was going to carry us around the outside there. And, uh, and we just met right there in the middle. And, and June, um, who was your, you said you had the best car, you said after the race, that this was the best car that you've had since you've been in Hendrick Motorsports. Was there anybody in, I'm sorry, was there anybody in particular that um, you worked better with drafting one driver or the other? No, not, not really. Um, we had a really good car. We had some good cars at Daytona. For some reason, we come to Talladega, they just, we just haven't had them, been able to get them to run, or we, we tear them up and never find out how good they were. So. Um, for whatever reason today, it just uh, the car was fast. I didn't really have to worry about, you know, who we were working with or around. And I, I really, you know, didn't try to uh, piss anybody off, but I just, you know, I didn't worry about trying to help everybody and, and trying to be everybody's friend out there. You just, you got to run, you take it. Everybody sort of understands what the situation is. When you get a good run, they don't, they don't come every lap. You got to take, take your opportunities. Stay upstairs, please. Go ahead. Back downstairs, Holly, do you have a question? Let's get Holly Kane at microphone, please. Um, Junior, one of the things that we saw, some people immediately went to the back and tried to use that strategy. You never did. You raced up front all day, If you could, and obviously that worked out well. If you could talk a little bit about that, and then I have a question for Ricky. Yeah, when I've tried to ride in the back, and it's, you know, and, and you, you try to go, uh, it's, it's usually – Typically, the, the race is two to three wide for the first ten rows, and you can't go anywhere. You know, you can't get in, you can't go anywhere. So we always end up packed up in behind that mess, and then we find our way into the, the last lap wreck. And uh, so I decided that if you know the car was pretty good in practice, and I just you know I felt like that if I could get up there up front, that seems to be working for for Matt. He's been doing really well this year on the plate tracks, and he's always toward the front and never has to worry about working his way through the pack if he's if he's coming out in, in, you know toward the front on that last pit stop and we were good enough uh, good enough today to be able to do that you know in the past I've tried to do it and just make the wrong moves or whatever and, and find myself in the back anyways but the car was really strong today and Ricky this is for you you've had a you've had some good runs here lately some top tens and stuff like that if you could kind of talk about building off that and you mentioned how you know finishing out the season and, and really seeing some results like that yeah, everybody's, uh, you know, working real hard. I think our cars are getting better, and, um, you know, everybody at the shop's, uh, you know, all hands on, uh, you know, just trying to trying to make our season the, the best it can be here at the end. And, um, you know, we struggled throughout uh, the first half of the season, uh, definitely more than, than I thought we should or, uh, you know, definitely more than we wanted to. So, um, you know, we've learned a lot. Um, you know, I think we're, we're getting better as a team, and, um, you know, I'm learning a little bit more about what we need to do from, uh, practice to the race, uh, you know, to, to make our cars still fast throughout the race. Um, so it's uh, it's been fun the last you know month or so, and um, you know we just need to keep it going. Uh, you know, today was a great race for us, and we had a good one here last time. So we uh, we were looking forward to coming back to Talladega, and um, you know hopefully we can uh, carry that on. Go ahead here to the left, right here. Matt Weaver, PopularSpeed.com. This is more for Ricky and for Paul. I, I get the impression that Junior was going to wait until his moment to make the move. But for you two guys, 
is it kind of like a, a risk versus reward scenario where you don't want to be the guy to pull out and you're waiting for the guys behind to make their move before you jump out in front of them? Well, I have no idea. I haven't been in that position very often. So um, I was just going off of, uh, you know, what I saw throughout the race. And uh, it seemed like if uh, you could get to the, the left rear quarter of the, the guy in front of you and get a run, um, you could definitely make the bottom work, especially, you know, through the corner and, um, you know, and then drag race down the straightaway. So uh, that's what that's what we were trying to do uh, or, or my plan was. And then when he pulled down the block, I was, you know, kind of changed my game plan real quick and, and tried to go back to the top to, to get a run around the outside. But, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, it was the first time I've really been in that position to do it. Yeah, my, my plan was to uh, wait for somebody else to go to the bottom first and keep a track of where, you know, the 20 and 22 and, and those guys were. And I tried to pull in front of them when they got to me. Um, I wasn't going to be the first guy to do that because I've done that before. And I've been shuffled shuffled out pretty quick. So uh, you got to wait for – I was going to wait for somebody else to make the move first and try to piggyback on. Any additional questions? Stan? Stan Creekmore with RPMtonight.com. It's really for all three of you. How long do you let your breath out and that this weekend is over and that you've got great finishes before you turn your mind to Martinsville? Uh, I our mind's been on Martinsville because I've only been there once and we were terrible. So uh, we went and tested three days there a couple weeks ago. And, um, you know, the, the crew chiefs and, and guys have been working real hard on our race cars to uh, to get them better on the short track. So uh, we've been thinking about that a long time. Uh, the crew chiefs kind of, uh, I feel like they kind of take this weekend off and sit up on the pit, pit box and, and tell us when to uh, to pit. So, um, yeah, we've been working uh, towards Martinsville for, for a while now. We're uh, we're testing in Texas Monday and Tuesday, so we'll be on, working on that and trying to prepare a good car for that race. And looking forward to Martinsville. We didn't get to run with it wanted there last uh, time, and felt like we always run real good there. So looking forward to that. Yeah, we we all leave uh, tomorrow morning for Texas to test for a few days, so um, we'll be thinking about that. Then it's a long test. Long, yeah, three twelve-hour days, I think. And um, yeah, we did the same test that Ricky did at Martinsville to uh, prepare for this this coming weekend. And, um, you know, I think of Martinsville is a lot like a plate race. You prepare all you can, and then uh, the last 20 laps, all hell breaks loose. You never know how you're going to end up. Where we got a question at? We got two over here, Mark and George. Uh, Mark Arrow, PRN for Dale Jr. Dale, I was just looking at some of your stats. 22nd runner up uh, in the Sprint Cup Series, four this year, four at Talladega. Do they all do they feel like a near miss or, you know? Yeah, I mean I'm not gonna complain too much because I'm driving some of the best cars in the in the garage and got some of the best engines at, play, at a place like that. It you know, it really means a lot. Uh, it's frustrating, you know, to because you the worst part about it really is you go home and you'll spend months thinking about what you could have done to not be second. So that's the worst part about it. Actually, the process of it happening and doing it isn't that bad. You know, you're kind of happy with being competitive and. It was a good result, but you'll 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 go back and think of a million things you could have tried different. George, you have a question. He asked it. He asked it. I mean, I'll only ask you one thing. You said you'll replay it and think about what you could have done differently. It seems there really wasn't anything you could have done differently because it all played out behind you, right? Yeah, I guess if uh, you know we have a last lap wreck every time, and I guess next time we are in that situation, we'll try to go a lap sooner. Any more questions here in the media center? Somebody back there in the back, Roger. Roger Holtzclaw, Speedway Media. <clears throat> Dale, um, obviously, as they pointed out, 22 uh, runner-up finishes. Uh, you run as hard as you can every lap and try as hard as you can. What do you say to those multitude of people out there that every time Jimmy Johnson passes you at a racetrack, they're screaming, it's team orders, it's team orders. <laughs> we obviously know that's not true. Yeah, we hear about it on Dirty Mo Radio every Monday on the re on the Reaction Theater about how disappointed they are that we haven't won yet. So uh, <clears throat> we're getting close, man. I'm gonna tell you, you know, looking at our run since Chicago, we've been this is the best my car's been all year. Um, I've had some of the best cars the last five races that I've had all season, and they're not they say they're not doing anything different, but 
they sure are running really good and I think we're right around the corner from winning one of these races and we're just going to keep trying. Any further questions? Upstairs, I think you have one upstairs. Go ahead. Lee Spencer for Fox, uh, Fox Sports. Hey, Paul, real quick, can you talk about the improvements that, that RCR has made in you know, the, the closing months of the season and what are your expectations for 2014 with the new lineup? Yeah, I, I'm excited for next year. <clears throat> we, um, we did a lot of work in the off season getting ready for this Gen 6 car, as everybody did, and mm. I feel like, um, like we started the year pretty strong as a company, uh, uh, the 2017 particularly, and then the 29 and 31 have, have uh, come on really strong the, the second half of the season. We kind of fell off, and now we're picking back up. So, um, yeah, I, I feel pretty good about where we're at as a company. I know we're making a, a big gains chassis arrow. Um, wise and uh, the motors have gotten a lot better so just small improvements everywhere make a big difference um, Ryan coming over next year uh, he's gonna he's gonna bring a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge too and uh, looking forward to working with him